Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Karen Zagian. I am a colorectal surgeon in Los Angeles, and I'm associate professor at Cedar sinai Medical Center. Um, in this video, I'd like to share with you um, the common techniques uh, that we perform um, when, it, uh, when we're doing a colectomy for patients with ulcerative colitis. Um, and uh, the same surgery, uh, the J pouch operation, is also done for patients with familial polyposis and some of our patients with Crohn's disease. So these, uh, this video includes uh, schematics and diagrams that I have prepared uh, to share with my patients. Um, this is a reconstructive operation, um, which means it's um, technically a little bit difficult for uh, patients to sometimes grasp. And so I feel like having a schematic um, and a representation of what we're doing doing in this staged operation is very useful. And I hope that um, you enjoy this and please comment below so that we can uh, continue to improve on how we're sharing data and information with our patients and to improve uh, patient outcomes. So I'm going to go ahead and share um, my screen. And here we go. So before we discuss um, the surgery uh, for um, ulcerative colitis, also known as the j pouch operation, I think kind of having a basic understanding of the normal colon anatomy um, is useful. Um, so as we all eat, food obviously goes into our stomachs and from there into our small intestine and into many feet of small intestine. And really the role of the small intestine is to absorb um, nutrients, whereas the role of the colon is to absorb water uh, and electrolytes and prevent us from having diarrhea, watery stool, okay? So as the food enters the very last portion of the small intestine, from there it goes into the terminal ileum and uh, ultimately into the cecum, which is the first portion of the, um, of the colon. Um, the cecum has an appendage on it. This is the appendix. Um, and from there, the bowel, uh, the bowel contents go into the right colon, across the abdomen into the transverse colon, left colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and out the anus, okay? So the common um, ways that we do a J-pouch operation, and this is the standard operation for patients with ulcerative colitis, um, some of our patients with Crohn's disease and then patients with familial polyposis, um, is that we may do it in two or three stages. Now, um, disclaimer, some surgeons do this in one stage and I'll explain later why I think this is uh, too risky and not something that I do. So in a two-stage uh, operation, uh, who's, um, who's a candidate for a two-stage approach? Um, patients with medically refractory um, colitis um, that have failed medical treatments continue to have uh, to flare. Um, but who are considered candidates for an elective operation. That means um, you're doing state, you're stable at home, you can walk into the hospital to have your operation um, rather than those patients that are hospitalized having an emergency operation. Um, patients with ulcerative colitis who go on to develop dysplasia. Dysplasia is a risk uh, when you have ulcerative colitis where you can form precancer within the colon um, and sometimes even cancer. And these patients also are uh, commonly referred for surgery. Um, and in these patients, we can generally do a two-stage operation. Um, patients with familial polyposis undergoing a J pouch operation are generally done in two stages. Um, usually we prefer that patients having a, a two-stage approach are not on steroids and that their nutritional status is good. Um, on the other hand, patients having a three-stage operation are usually those that are hospitalized having an urgent colectomy. Um, these are, tend to also be our patients that are severely malnourished, patients who are, are been, have been on chronic corticosteroids. Um, and, and sometimes at the time of surgery, we have to make the decision to do this in three stages because we can't reach the pouch um, during an attempt to do a two-stage. And I'll explain this a little bit later. So what happens in a two-stage um, IPA or J-pouch operation? Uh, the first thing that we do that is that the colon, um, the entire colon and rectum um, are removed. The anus and the sphincter muscles are preserved. So this is why you can maintain continence when you do a J-pouch operation. Your anus is actually not removed, um, nor is the small bowel or the ileum. 
so you can continue to absorb nutrition, uh, nutrients, and maintain uh, your health um, without a colon, okay? Um, so we cut here and here, and now we're left with small bowel and the anus. And then what we do is we fold the ileum in the form of a J, and this J pouch is then connected to the anus, okay? So the reason we fold it in the form of a J is that we actually attach, when we fold it on itself, we actually attach this limb to this limb to form a common channel that can expand and hold stool um, similar to a rectum. This becomes your new rectum, and this is connected to the anus. Um, because this um, pouch has to be stretched down into the into the pelvis and is commonly on tension, uh, there is a risk that the connection to the anus can leak, okay? And if that leaks, bowel contents can spill into the abdomen and patients become sick. So to prevent that leak from making you sick, if it happens, um, we actually perform a temporary ileostomy. That's a bag that you wear outside um, on your abdominal wall. Um, and what this does is it bypasses um, stool um, to the outside world into an external bag and allows the J pouch to anus connection to heal safely before you start using um, the pouch, okay? And this is why, I, like I said earlier, I generally recommend not doing this in a single stage. In a single stage, you would not do an ileostomy whatsoever, but in about 10% of patients, there could be a leak at that connection site. And if you happen to be one out of 10 patients who leaks and you don't have an ileostomy bag, um, the consequences could be really severe. Um, and so for that reason, I generally recommend a temporary period of two months that patients will have this ileostomy bag in order to make their surgery and overall long-term outcomes safe and better. Um, so then in two months after this surgery, the patients come back to the hospital um, and they have the ileostomy reversed. So we do another little surgery through uh, the ileostomy site, reconnect the bowel ends, um, and the external bag goes away. And now the patient is um, using their J pouch. And generally, patients can expect um, initially frequent bowel movements, up to 20 bowel movements a day, um, until the pouch kind of learns to expand and adapts to work the way that the rectum does. Um, although it's really never perfect, and patients I usually counsel um, can expect to have about four to six bowel movements with control on a daily basis once they've kind of, um, the pouch is acclimated. So then what's a three-stage operation, okay? So and remember the three-stage operation is the operation we generally perform for patients that are malnourished, sick on steroids, having urgent surgeries, or sometimes if at the time of attempting to pull the pouch down to the pelvis, we can't reach it. And why would we not be able to reach it? Patients who are sick and have been on steroids for a long period of time can actually develop scarring um, of the mesentery, the blood flow to the um, small bowel that could prohibit, prohibit us from reaching the pouch down um, to the anus. So if we feel that we can't connect it, we do it in three stages to allow time to recover, nutritional status to improve before we bring patients back uh, to do the J pouch. So in the three-stage operation, the, in the first stage, what we do is we just remove the colon, okay? The rectum is not removed. The rectum is left in place. Um, and basically what we're doing now is we're stapling off the ileum and the rectum here and here, um, and the colon is removed. Um, the rectum is just stapled off, it just sits there. It really doesn't um, cause a lot of problems. Um, once the stool is no longer going into it, it you know, you might have a little bit of bleeding or discharge from the rectum, but the constant flare and, um, you know, symptoms that uh, colitis is causing, even if the rectum is actively inflamed, diminish. Um, and then what we do is we bring the small bowel, um, the ileum, out to the skin as an end ileostomy. This is also a bag to the external world um, that you wear. Um, so in the intestine is brought out to the skin. You wear a bag over this that captures a stool. When you eat, poop goes into this external bag, not into your 
rectum and not out your anus, okay? So you're diverted. This allows patients to recover, to regain nutrition. You can actually eat again, um, come off of the steroids and medical therapy that you have been on, regain nutrition, regain strength. Um, and usually this period where we um, allow patients, you know, to stay like this for, uh, post-operatively is around three months, but for some patients can be as long as six months, depending on, you know, how much uh, uh, rehabilitation you need. And then um, what we do is we come back after a period of three months when we've determined that you're healthy now to come back and have the J-pouch operation. And what we do is we disconnect the small bowel from the skin, okay, and detach it from the external bag. And now what we do is we go ahead and fold it on itself and create the J-pouch, okay, to reconstruct a new rectum. And then the rectum is now removed in this surgery. So the rectum comes out. And um, the J pouch is then connected to the anus. Okay. Now, again, similar to what I described before, this connection can leak. And so we um, have to perform a temporary ileostomy bag um, where, you know, just upstream of the J pouch, um, the small intestine is brought out to the skin, um, secured to another external bag. This ileostomy is a little bit different than the original ileostomy you have in stage one, in that it's higher upstream um, in the intestine, so you're a little bit more likely to become dehydrated with a diverting ileostomy uh, than with an end ileostomy. Um, and then patients are allowed to, you know, uh, recover for a period of two months. We make sure that the connection to the anus, the J pouch is sealed and secure. And then we come back uh, now two months from this operation uh, to take this ileostomy down, reconnect the intestine and put everything back into continuity. And now patients have completed their final third stage of a three-stage J pouch operation. Um, and they um, begin to have bowel movements through their anus again. Okay, so during this recovery, patients can expect frequent bowel movements, um, usually up to 20 bowel movements a day, um, but this diminishes over time um, to about four to six bowel movements with control. Um, the immediate post-operative course after um, any of these surgeries is usually a two to three day hospital course. What we do during that time period is we make sure that you have adequate pain control. We do a bunch of things other than just giving you narcotic pain medications. We use many medications and blocks and things like that to make sure that your pain is adequately controlled. We make sure that your bowel is functioning. Uh, we connect you uh, to a stoma nurse um, and continue to this, this care um, post-operatively into your home uh, to make sure that you have adequate help and assistance to learn how to use that initial stoma. Um, and during the hospital stay, we also watch for complications like infections and a leak, um, an abscess. We make sure you don't have an ileus. That's where the intestine can be slow to recover um, because of surgery. And if you do, we support you with fluids until your you know, bowel recover recovers function. Um, and then we let you go home when you look like you're ready to do that. Long-term expectations of the J pouch is that all patients with ulcerative colitis um, will come off of their medical therapy completely. We generally expect uh, bowel function, like I said earlier, to be up to 20 a day. So usually I tell patients to invest in maybe a bidet um, or some sort of a washlet to help with washing so you're not using um, wet wipes and toilet paper to rub on the areas. Your bum will get pretty raw um, in that initial post-op period. Uh, invest in some diaper rash cream. Um, and then usually, so this is a very initial period, but usually at about three months, patients, that'll cut down to about 50%. And usually by six to 12 months, um, patients can expect four to six bowel movements a day. Um, other th uh, things that can uh, patients can be faced with long term is acute pouchitis. This is um, bacterial inf inf infection of the pouch that generally responds well to antibiotics. It's a little bit freaky for patients. Most feel like their UC has come back um, as they feel a flare, urgency, frequency, sometimes blood, um, cramping, and pain. Um, but generally, the good news is, is that most patients respond very well to antibiotics. A small subset of patients go on to develop something called chronic pouchitis, where you have to be maintained on a low dose of antibiotics or another medication to help with um, maintain the inflammation. Um, and then, you know, um, some patients can actually 
go on to be reclassified with Crohn's disease. Um, so this, why does this happen? You know, this is an unfortunate um, complication that can happen long term after a J pouch uh, surgery, and this is just the inherent biology of inflammatory bowel disease, and that we think that. Um, ulcerative colitis to Crohn's disease is really a continuum of disease and patients can kind of change course um, throughout their disease course. So this is why really we no longer tell patients with ulcerative colitis that have a J pouch operation that they've been cured of their disease because a small subset will continue, will go on to develop severe inflammation in the pouch and get reclassified as, um, as Crohn's disease. The good news is that a lot of these patients um, can and will respond to medical medical therapy, even those medical treatments that they previously failed um, when they had their colon in place. Um, and a very, very small subset of patients will actually um, go on to have, you know, a permanent ileostomy after uh, this operation. Uh, nowadays, we um, also offer this operation for some patients with Crohn's disease, with known Crohn's disease, um, albeit with uh, appropriate counseling and understanding that, uh, again, the surgery is not a cure. And usually patients with Crohn's disease who go on to have a J-pouch um, will continue to have very active surveillance, um, and some will continue on their medical uh, therapy um, postoperatively um, as well. Um, as a heavy uh, IBD referral center here, we get a lot of patients uh, with uh, this, um, you know, this kind of uh, conundrum, and we have to have very informed decisions with our Crohn's patients who are potential candidates for J-pouch surgery um, so that we can make sure that we offer the right operation for them and for those that uh, want to try and have bowel uh, uh, um, continuity uh, preserved, uh, that we can offer that to them. And then the last thing I always talk to uh, all patients having pelvic surgery um, about is um, sexual function and fertility. Um, in men, um, when we're doing uh, the J pouch operation, because we're dissecting around the rectum where the sex nerves reside, um, there is an, a, a theoretical inherent risk um, to sexual dysfunction um, via traction injury on these nerves. Um, this risk is low. Um, really low compared to, for example, our patients with rectal cancer who have their rectum removed because we stay very close to the rectum and avoid veering off out into um, the adjacent tissues and structures when we're doing um, surgery. However, um, it's a, it's a, it is always something that's mentioned to patients so that they know it's a possibility, although um, it seems to be quite rare. We are actually in the process of doing a large multi-center study evaluating this right now so we can really understand what that rate is, um, but is probably on the order of maybe 5%. Um, and women, uh, fertility is the bigger issue when we're doing a pelvic operation, um, scarring can develop in the pelvis and around the rectum, around the, um, fallopian tubes and ovaries that can result in, um, infertility for our patients. We think that by doing this operation, um, laparoscopically and robotically, um, we are minimizing scar tissue, minimizing, you know, wrong plane surgery, um, to really minimize these risks and complications for our, our patients. Um, and really that's one of the reasons why, um, a minimally invasive approach, uh, through a lap operation or a robotic operation uh, can benefit um, our patients having um, a J pouch operation. But again, another thing that needs to be discussed with our patients so that we make the right decisions together. I hope that that is a comprehensive review um, for everybody. Um, and I hope that kind of explains the surgery um, and puts it in you know diagram form so that you can understand what's being done. Um, and uh, all right, again, appreciate any comments and feedback. Um, I hope that all my patients will watch this and I hope that I can reach some patients across the world who um, you know, are needing a little bit more um, explanation uh, and appreciation for what um, this surgery uh, involves. Take care everyone, have a great day. Thank you for watching.